If you've ever used a hand sewing needle, you know that the needle has an eye in one end and a point at the opposite end. The thread goes through the eye and the point goes through the fabric. A sewing machine doesn't work the same way. Sewing machine needles have an eye in the point of the needle and the thread goes through that. When the point of the needle pierces the fabric, it picks up a second thread from a bobbin, just kind of a tiny spool underneath the needle. When it picks up that bobbin thread, it links the two threads together like a chain so that you see continuous stitches on both sides of the fabric. In order for you to make stitches with a machine, you'll need to both thread the needle from above and wind a bobbin and bring a thread up from below. And that's what we're doing in this episode of the How to Sew Quick Start video series. One of the things that was really important to me as I put together this particular episode was that I show you a lot of different types of machine. I don't know what kind of machine you have in front of you and what machine you're going to be threading and winding a bobbin on so that you can begin to sew. But I wanna make sure that all the machines that I show you get as close to yours as I possibly can. So I've got a bunch of different types of sewing machine to demonstrate. We're going to thread all of them more than once, we're going to wind a bobbin on the two most common of them. And then I'm gonna demonstrate exactly how to go through that multiple times so that when you get in front of your machine, you will be as familiar as possible with all of the places where threading the machine might be troublesome. We're gonna anticipate those problems ahead of time so that we can troubleshoot before the trouble begins. This GIF gives you an overview of exactly what your machine is doing, in case you've ever wondered. The take-up lever holds the slack of the upper thread. The bobbin hook grabs the upper thread and wraps it around the bobbin thread so it can lock stitch in the center of the fabric. The very first time you thread a sewing machine, it can feel a little intimidating. There's a lot going on there. There are literally a lot of moving parts on your sewing machine. And a lot of those places that are moving also have tiny little openings that a thread needs to pass through. And so it can feel really overwhelming to thread it for the first time. But the good news is once you have threaded your machine a few times, it starts to become muscle memory. So what we really want to focus on here is making good muscle memory so that each time you thread your machine, you're doing a really great job of it. We're building on our vocabulary from the last video as we go through this quickly, but then we'll do it more slowly. Spool goes on the spool holder. Take the end of the thread through the upper thread guide. It should just pop right in. Lay it in the tension mechanism between the two discs and past the spring and then carry it to your take-up lever, which is at the highest point. It might be an eye that you need to thread or it might just pop in. Through the lower thread guide, so from the spool to the upper thread guide, through the tension mechanism to the take-up lever to the lower thread guide, and then we snip the end of the thread so that we can thread the needle from front to back. It's hard enough to do it with a new end, but to do it with a frayed end is no good. Once it's threaded, we pull the tails under the presser foot and out the back. Begin by placing the spool on the spool holder. Carry the end of the thread over to the upper thread guide and pop it in. And then lay it in the tension mechanism between the discs. Raise the lever to the highest point using the hand wheel and then thread the take-up lever. Carry the thread from the spool to the upper thread guide, past the tension mechanism through the take-up lever, and then to the lower thread guide. From there, you want to snip the end of your thread so that you have a fresh end before you thread the needle from front to back. One thing you should know about threading a sewing machine is that, do you remember 10th grade math? A lot of us blocked it out. And um, when we were doing graphing parabolas in geometry, there was this idea of an asymptote and that it makes a curve that gets closer and closer and closer and closer to zero, but it never actually touches zero. Think of that shape that, uh, that is the shape of your skill threading your machine. That the first few times you do it, 
it will feel foreign and complicated and too many steps and too frustrating. But the more you do it, the easier it gets until eventually you will develop muscle memory for threading your sewing machine and you sincerely will not think about it. You will be making a grocery list. You will be thinking about, oh, right, I did forget the laundry in the washing machine. You will be answering that work email in your head while you're threading the machine because your body will remember the steps. So if you are at a point as you learn how to sew where you think, ah, oh, and you get you hit a wall and you get a little stuck threading the machine, please hang in there. Please hang in there. It really does get easier so quickly. It's one of the reasons that I've spent so much time in this video episode, making sure that we thread the machine over and over with different types of machine. I want to demonstrate to you that as you become accustomed to this particular skill, it gets easier and easier. It's never not a thing you have to do. It never gets to zero, but it gets closer and closer and closer as you go. Spool holder. Then we go to the upper thread guide. It should just pop right in. In the tension mechanism, we make sure that we get it between the tension discs, if that's the type of machine you have, so that it lays inside and goes past the spring. Then we raise the lever to the highest point and pop the thread in. This is just a, a pop in. We don't have to thread through the eye. It just binks right into place. And then the lower thread guide, there may be two. You can usually floss them, kind of and then thread the needle from front to back. Again, spool goes on the spool holder. Then it goes past the first thread guide, through the tension mechanism, into the take-up lever, and then we can usually floss to get into the lower thread guide, but there may be more than one lower thread guide. Snip the end of the thread to make it easier to thread the needle from front to back. As you draw the thread through, it goes under the presser foot. On this entry-level computerized machine, it's the same thing, just different shapes. So upper thread guide, lay it in the tension mechanism, make sure we're at the highest point, pop it in the take-up lever, floss to get that lower thread guide, and then we snip the end of the thread and thread the needle from front to back. Once it's threaded, we can draw the thread through under the presser foot and out the back of the machine. This machine even has instructions printed on it. Spool goes on the spool holder and goes across to the upper thread guide. This is a lay-in tension mechanism, so just bing, bing. There are no discs to look for. Take up lever, it just pops into place. We can floss that lower thread guide pretty easily so that we can thread the needle from front to back. And then our final machine, a more advanced computerized machine. We can pull our thread on the spool holder. This one has a spool cap because it's a horizontal spool holder and that way it doesn't fly off. The thread goes from there through the upper thread guide and then it's a lay-in tension mechanism so you follow the arrows. You go down, just lay it in place. We can't see the tension discs. There's a little U-turn symbol so we go up and then we can make sure that the arm is at the highest level Right there, you can see when it's at the highest point. And they go bink, bink, back front in order to catch, watch, back, boom, like a little U, back front in order to pop it in that take up lever. And then we do the two lower thread guides, just like we're flossing our teeth, snip the end, and then we can thread our needle from front to back and draw it through under the presser foot and out the back of the machine. Remember how I said that for a sewing machine to make stitches, it requires both a top thread and a bobbin thread? The bobbin usually looks like this. That's a metal bobbin. They can also come in a plastic form, but they are basically tiny spools of thread. You will need to wind your bobbin from the same thread that you are sewing with which means if you threaded your machine first, you almost definitely have to unthread the machine to wind the bobbin. That's okay. One of the skills we wanna work on is making the act of threading your machine muscle memory. So threading it again is totally cool. In order to wind the bobbin, we're going to start with an empty bobbin and we're gonna wind it on a separate motor on your machine to get it ready to thread from below. 
This is a top-loading bobbin, um, and the instructions on our entry-level computerized machine are printed on the machine. The thread comes off the spool and around the bobbin winder spring to give it a little bit of tension. And then we carry it over to our bobbin. This one's a plastic bobbin. It has holes in either side, and we thread from the interior to the exterior and leave a little tail. I grab that tail and pop it on the bobbin winder, which snaps into place. And then I hold the tail while I press the presser foot with my foot. If it doesn't wind immediately, then you can loosen it. Sometimes you need to feed a little bit to get a good feed on the bobbin and catch it while it winds. It's important as your bobbin winds that it winds evenly. So as we wrap it around that tiny little nubbin at the top and we take care to get it inside the spring just right, one of the functions of that spring is to cause the thread to rise and lower in a way that evenly winds the bobbin. This helps prevent tangles later and is an important part of getting the bobbin wound correctly. So see that? See how the thread goes up and down, up and down as the bobbin winds? And then it will stop automatically once the bobbin is full and you remove it. With your bobbin wound, we have to place it inside the machine before we can use it. Remember when we threaded the machine? You had to go through a tension mechanism. The purpose of the tension mechanism was to take up the slack so that you wouldn't get knots as the needle goes through the fabric. Your bobbin also has a tension mechanism whose purpose is the same. It makes sure that your stitches are nice and snug when they meet one another in the fabric. You might have a bobbin case that houses the tension mechanism, in which case you have a front loading machine. Or you may have what's called a drop-in bobbin, which means you have a top loading machine. And I'm gonna show you how to put your bobbin in either of those. Again, this is our entry-level computerized machine with a top-loading bobbin. First, I remove the bobbin case cover, and you can see the instructions are printed on the machines in case you ever forget. This one, the bobbin should be like a P with the thread coming off the left side, and we just follow that arrow all the way around to insert the bobbin thread. From there, with a threaded needle, I hold the needle thread steady, and lower the needle into the machine just one time to make a stitch that I can then bring to the top. There's my stitch. That is a single stitch on the machine. I bring it to the top and then I can use the end of my scissors or a pin or my fingernails to tease that out before I tuck it under the presser foot and out the back. Last most common question about threading your machine and loading your bobbin, where do the threads go? Once you have lowered the needle that single turn through the throat plate to pick up your bobbin thread and brought it up above the throat plate. Both those threads go below the presser foot and out to the back. That way when the fabric goes under the presser foot as you're sewing, the fabric will be sandwiched between the two threads where it belongs. This is our front loading bobbin, which has a bobbin case inside. And so it's going to be done a little differently. The winding is similar, but the bobbin part is different. So on this machine, here I am with a metal bobbin this time. I'm gonna put a spool cap because I've got a horizontal spool and I don't want it to go flying off. I grab the end of my thread and there's the bobbin winding spring. And you can feel it sticking in. And then when you tug on it, it actually gives you a little resistance. From there, I take my bobbin and just like with the plastic bobbin, I'm going to thread from the inside to the outside and then grab that little tail I hold that in my hand and pop it on the bobbin winder. This one, once I snap it into place, it automatically begins to wind. I don't need to use the foot pedal, but it still goes up, down, up, down in order to wind evenly and then stops automatically. You can actually see on the right there, the bobbin winder will actually boop, pop out all on its own. I separate the thread and remove the bobbin from the bobbin winder. But then I need to put it inside the bobbin case, and that's this gadget. This is a bobbin case, and it slips inside, but it's got a little screw. See the tiny screw on the side? That can actually be adjusted to increase or decrease the tension on the bobbin itself. Inside the bobbin case, it shows me which direction this goes, the thread, which way it's supposed to spin clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, and it has to pop inside the bobbin case and then go through the tension mechanism on the side, under the flange, and out. And then you can see that resistance from the tension on the bobbin case. 
Let's look at that more closely. It's really important to do it correctly. Again, your bobbin can go like a Q coming off the right side, or as in our first machine, like a P with the thread coming off the left side. This machine, it's like a Q, and so I've got my tail going out, and here's my bobbin case, and they slip together. See how they just slip together there? And then the thread has to go through that crack, that opening. If you have trouble getting it through there, you can flip the bobbin case over, see here? And then I bring it down, and it comes through the little opening, pink. But then I slide it over underneath the tension flange so that it comes through this wider opening here. When you tug on it, you can see the resistance where it's actually, it's interacting with the tension mechanism. This little handle locks the bobbin inside the bobbin case so it won't fall out, so that when I go to insert it in the machine, it will stay in place. This is the bobbin mechanism inside my machine. It's actually called a shuttle hook, and that's what catches the upper thread and carries it around. So I take my bobbin case, ta-da, and I use that little handle to lock my bobbin in place. This finger has to point upward as it locks into the bobbin case there. Once it's locked in and my needle is threaded, I hold the thread in my hand snugly. I turn the needle so it goes all the way down and all the way up a single time. So I'm going to pinch that thread, go all the way down and all the way up a single time. And there, that, that's the stitch. See it? And as I pull the upper thread now without using the hand wheel, that stitch rises to the surface. Do you see that loop? That is a stitch being made by your machine. And now my job is simply to tease that stitch out. I can use a pin, I can use my fingernails, I can use the scissors. And then that's an upper thread and a lower thread, top thread, bobbin thread, and they both go underneath the presser foot and out to the back so that I'm ready to sew. You'll notice when we bring the bobbin thread up from below that it made a stitch that actually you can physically watch the stitch being made. And that's a great way to troubleshoot as you are threading and winding your bobbin. You should be able to see that stitch being made. A lot of times if it doesn't, what's happened is that you've threaded the needle incorrectly and just taking it out and starting over solves the problem. Just to demonstrate that, here's, here's a mistake. I put in my bobbin case, but do you see how the finger is actually not fully articulated inside that opening? Now I'm raising and lowering the needle, look at the finger. It has gone over to the left here. I'm, I'm threading my machine needle, but the finger is not where it's supposed to be. So now when I lower my needle down and attempt to make a stitch, as the shuttle hook rotates, it's not going to articulate with the bobbin case correctly. Once that happens, it will fail completely. So here we go. Let's see what happens when I make a stitch if I've inserted my bobbin case incorrectly. See how it's, it's just rocking. It's rocking inside there. And I go down and it's going to come up and nothing happens. There's no stitch there. So what I need to do is pop it in place so that I can make a stitch correctly. So if you're having trouble getting the stitch to come up above the throat plate, that is your next step. Turn it off and turn it back on maybe literally if you have a computerized machine, but definitely by taking the thread all the way off and re-threading from scratch, taking the bobbin all the way out and inserting it through the tension mechanism again. 99.99% .99 of the time that solves all your threading problems. My very strong advice once you have figured out how to thread your machine and wind a bobbin is to practice threading over and over. So once you've threaded the machine, raise your needle to the highest level and pull the thread all the way out, do it over again. You will discover very quickly that the parts of the machine that need to interact with the thread will become very familiar to you and it won't feel so intimidating. Next up on the How to Sew series, we're sewing in a straight line.